Hello, it's Jimmy here at our release. We have here another Vauxhall Vivaro to look at. Okay, so this one has engine failure hazard sign on, as well as the spanner and the stop sign there. It's a very scary sort of sign for people, but most of the time that doesn't really mean anything that the engine is going to fail. It usually means you've got to sensor it. So I'm just setting up the scan here. We're going to do health report and go through, see what faults we have. Okay, so we have a list of faults here, 047195, pressure upstream of the turbine, incorrect mounting. Uh, we have, sorry, there's a bit of glare on the screen. Upstream, implausible signal, particle filter clogged, preheating diagnostic fault, engine oil dilution, particle filter outside tolerances. Fuel cinder circuit open, if it was, if that was true, it wouldn't be starting. Uh, okay, so we're going to concentrate on all of these ones that are in the engine ECU here. Uh, so we're going to have first have a look at the pressure upstream of the turbine, see why it says the mountain is incorrect. I will we'll look at some live data first before I actually physically look at it. Could be a dead sensor, blocked pipe, burst um, rubber hose that, that goes to it. We're going to look for upstream pressure on here. There we are, and then we'll find the engine speed. Graph that over, and combine them. So we're looking for both of these charts to sort of match, pretty similar. Let's give it a rev up and down. Okay, so we can see one isn't moving whatsoever. So we've definitely got an issue there, we've got flatlining. Um, let's have a look at the DPF, differential pressure, and soot. Nineteen millibars of pressure, forty-six grams of soot in the DPF. So that needs cleaning. Okay, so I'm just going to try and get the camera down there because I can't physically see much from up here. You can see the sensor is sitting a bit wonky. Someone's had someone's had it off. Uh, let me try and get the plug off. Actually, okay, I'm taking the plug off. Don't know what way someone's wedged wedged the clip in sort of sideways. See if I can just get that out. Somebody's had this out messing around with it. So the tube has not burst. I'm just going to have to flex that a little bit back so I can see it clearly. Tube is okay. Looks like someone's put a new tube on it actually, haven't they? I'm not sure. The sensor is not. It's not giving any reading whatsoever, so we've got something going on there. Okay, so we've got a pressure tester hooked up. Some pressure it is blocked absolutely solid okay so I'm using some DPF cleaner in this bottle and I'm what I've done is I've filled this tube up with the DPF cleaner you can see there I'm just gonna let that soak in a little bit I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure just to push it down and let it soak in okay so while that's holding pressure what I'm doing is I'm just removing the glow plugs we're going to get all four of these out so we've got the four glow plugs out this is the order that they came out in see number one has no resistance number two is getting something number four is dead and uh, we'll just check the resistance on them. It's not getting a good connection here, sorry. It's hard to do it single handedly. You see, number four and number one are faulty. So we're just going to replace all four of them. So that is the new glow plugs in there. So 
I've done now is I've used this cable to break through the hardened up carbon that's inside the pipe there. So now if we connect this back on here. We should have no pressure. That's perfect. Okay, so just reconnected that sensor. We're just going to go back inside and retest the live data. So we're just taking off some of the items that we don't need and we're just going to go back in again and graph up the sensor here, uh, combine it. And look at that, lovely. I did forget to mention we did fit a new sensor on that. Uh, that one was a little bit out of range. So now I'm draining the engine oil. Get all of that out. So that's the new oil and filter in and just confirm the oil level. So you want it about halfway up between the two notches. So we've got the oxygen sensor there removed. We're just going to put our tube in here. So this is the DPF cleaning fluid that we're using and it's connected to the gun here. We're just going to squeeze the trigger now and get it in. Okay, so we're just going to clear the fault codes and then we're going to rev the vehicle up. See, now that we cleared the fault codes, we can actually see the mileage of the vehicle. It's only done 74,000 miles. Just going to hold the revs up now. So we're just holding the revs around sort of 3,000 RPM. See the graph there where it's come down and the suck grams are now dropping. We'll see from the exhaust there, a lot of steam. Really difficult to get these vents to stay. The accelerator jumps up and down. So you see the sort of readings jumping around a bit. So we, what we want is both of these readings to be below six grams, six pressure and six grams at idle when the vehicle's idle down. That's what we want to be uh, aiming for. Below that, if we can. See now these numbers are coming down nicely. Just need to wait another few minutes for them to come down to where they need to be. So the revs have dropped a little bit. We'll just try and get it back up. So the grams of soot on diesel talk you through a little bit about how it works. It reads off the pressure, so if you if you take into consideration like a weighing scales a weighing scales would the more pressure you put on the weighing scales how many grams are going to come up this side so this one is reading it from the pressure that is in air pressure within the DPF how much pressure there is is calculated on how much grams of soot you have in the DPF okay you can see we're down sort of to around eight grams now we're just gonna let it idle so we're close enough that's gonna start to come down a little bit sooner once it does a bit more driving we're down to five millibars of pressure which is all good we're just going to come back from the live data read the fault codes engine oil dilution so we need to get that one cleared now the engine oil dilution one is done by ignition on and press these buttons on here we're going to go through till we get to oil uh, service intervals then press and hold And then press and hold again. Twenty-five thousand miles or two years. It's a long while, isn't it? Now, of course, we can clear the oil dilution fault. 
the oil has been reset. And that's it, all of the oil lights are gone, spanner lights, uh, engine malfunction lights. And the vehicle is now working correctly, so we're just about finished. That's it, see you on the next video.